Hello, everyone. Um, so you already uh, met Anya yesterday, and I mean we've been meeting uh, the past three days. So um, we are uh, presenting on a project that we did together. Um, it's going to be um, a slightly shorter presentation because then afterwards there will be also my own uh, presentation. So it's sort of uh, split up. Uh, we've uh, decided to mesh with the programming a little bit. Um, uh, so my name is Inter, this is Anja, um, and we'll talk about a little bit more about where we're coming from and where we're uh, based out of through the projects that uh, we're presenting here, uh, which is the feminist finance zine and uh, the feminist finance syllabus. So the zine is over here. Um, this is a viewing copy. <laughs> Um, but please feel free to have a look at it during or after the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's available online uh, as well. Um, so, we, uh, what we think is, how we wanted to phrase, to frame this, this presentation is to think about um, these projects as a way for us to um, sort of create a third space. Uh, uh, um, I'm based in academia, often involved in sort of highly <laughs> um, sort of limited spaces uh, and ways of publishing. And um, we wanted to create a space where we could exchange with more people uh, and value different kinds of uh, expertise as well um, on the topics of care. Uh, in relation to the economy. Um, so a sort of non-academic in-between space. Um, and this all happened during Corona. Um, it started just before and um, really when we, we wanted to make these connections was in the first few months of the, of the pandemic. So a lot of like, we don't know what's going on and how to deal with this and where we're going. Um, and I think that really was difficult, but it also led to some interesting decision, decisions that we took um, to make connections possible uh, in a way where, when they were very scarce, in a moment when they were very scarce. Um, so this is the zine and this is the syllabus. Um, and they weren't uh, intended or imagined at the start as these two things. We really started with the, with the zine. Um, and uh, they were sort of both, uh, the syllabus sort of flowed out of the zine in an interesting way. We'll talk about that a bit more later. Um, but they were both, they sort of were moment, were opportunities for us to uh, develop formats of interactions um, and exchanges across localities, disciplines, and experiences. Um, and we're going to talk through sort of the process of making and, and building these, um, these yeah, exchanges. So it's going to be sort of three themes, uh, bridging disciplines, connecting with a broader community, and knowing together. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, the zine is available for download, um, and we're very much also hoping to get your feedback on where to go next. Um, we have some ideas, uh, but we're very curious how you see this as well. So bridging disciplines. A bit more about where we're coming from. So um, I am, as I said, more based in academia. Uh, I've been um, involved in the Institute of Network Cultures um, for a while, for since 2015 now, uh, where Sorry, yeah, I'm looking at the next picture here already, but um, <laughs> I wanted to point that it's not here yet. Um, <laughs> um, I've been uh, involved in organizing conferences about um, uh, digital economy and sort of uh, the cultural sector and how to sort of reappropriate the technologies uh, that we see there, uh, very much inspired also by the previous uh, presentation that we just heard. Um, and um, Anya is uh, part of a, an organization called Amateur Cities, uh, which is much more in the uh, cultural sector. 
uh, you've heard uh, about Anya's work uh, yesterday. Um, but this combination of academia and cultural sector really also gave us opportunities uh, to sort of hack finance a little bit and make something new possible. Um, so this between us, we already started from a certain sort of interdisciplinarity, uh, but it also um, was something that we really wanted to um, yeah, make central. Um, this was the picture I was uh, wanting to point at. This is um, this panel that was part of a bigger conference was really the, sort of the starting point of thinking about this um, theme of feminist finance. We had a, uh, a session called Beyond the Blockchain, the Crypto Feminist Agenda, um, where these lovely people were uh, thinking about these uh, themes. Um, but th there was, this was part of a bigger conference that had all sorts of uh, connections with rethinking the digital economy basically for uh, more sort of grassroots um, uh, uses. Um, and we, we <laughs> uh, so I was part of the organ organizing of this conference, but I also with Anya was thinking, actually this theme, there's much more there. We need to sort of explore this in much more detail. Um, and that's how the zine came about as a sort of placing a lens on this conference to, to think about in w what is feminist finance and um, what could it mean for all these different people that have been talking throughout the conference, not about it, but could we sort of like shift the focus to, ma to make clear how those things might, might relate. Um, and the zine was a way to sort of build connections between speakers that were not very obvious um, and sort of fork the conference in a way that's uh, what, where we wanted it to go. Um, so here you see uh, a bit of the content of the uh, zine and the different formats of exchange, uh, like there's the double interview, um, sorry, this one, um, where two people um, from the conference were invited to sort of into a conversation together um, to sort of react to each other's work um, and to have these new connections. There's the quick fire interview, um, where, which was just a sort of a space to, to share thoughts on a, uh, on a level sort of playing field in a very um, sort of, yeah, quicker way. Um, and to put things next to each other that weren't really thought next to each other. Um, and then there's these artist contributions as well. Um, as a, again, a sort of different modality of engaging with these topics and values. Um, and this was sort of reframing uh, all the con contributions together through a new lens with this header of feminist finance. Um, we're also very happy that we've, we've been doing this process of making a zine um, as part of the Institute of Network Cultures. That's where it was published next to, together with uh, Amateur Cities. I was doing this in the, the INC team and um, afterwards we also see that others in the team have taken it up as a sort of um, an experiment themselves to continue what, what, what could zine making be for us as a publishing strategy sort of in research. Um, but, uh, so connecting with the broader community, um, we didn't just want to talk to the people that were already at the conference, uh, but also open it up to people out there that might find this, this interesting. Um, and that's what you, s oh, sorry, that's, again, I do the same thing. <laughs> it's not there yet. Um, we came up with a sort of new way of distributing it, um, which is um, on the front page of the zine, we have this um, zine crossing um, sort of library card. Um, so we invite people to uh, read the zine, and, but then also give it away, which I think is, is a sort of essential part of a zine culture also, right, that it travels. Um, and leave their name um, 
and sort of hand it down, uh, sharing what is in there. Uh, but also an invitation for people to, to reach out to us um, wherever they are in the world and sh like say, hey, I got it. I found, it, I found this and this about it. Um, and I'm doing this. So we've actually been uh, receiving a lot of um, like emails and, and people reaching out to us to, to just say that they got it, which is really, really uh, interesting and, and uh, also inspiring because we learn about a lot of projects like around the world that we didn't know about. Uh, so it's been a sort of ongoing research tool that just kind of sometimes lets, lets itself be heard. Um, so that's where Anya starts. Um, yeah, so um, in February, we were assembling the zines where our process of um, the actual production was intercepted with the outbreak of the pandemic. We had imagined that we were going to organize um, a launch of the zine at a, a community space, also uh, related very much to um, t uh, the connection between technology and art. We were going to do it with Varia, some of you might know that space. And um, of course, it happened in a period where no assemblies, no physical assemblies were possible. We were still finding ways whether we could do it together uh, one way or another. Um, we wanted it very much to be a public event and this is where we came into um, a discussion that we could not resolve also with our partner because then we came up with an idea to do this discussion on Twitter, which they were very much against and uh, um, I'm very much keen to do it on Mastodon which I think if we had this discussion today, it would have resolved differently. Um, but back in the day, we did not think that doing this launch on Mastodon would actually open it up sufficiently. So uh, this is kind of where we um, parted in a friendly way and we decided they, they felt that they couldn't ethically support our choices, so we they said, you know, we still like your work, if we can do something, we're there for you, but we don't want to have anything to do with this. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, we, what we decided to do is to uh, create uh, three meetings on Twitter. They were hour-long uh, discussions that we curated. Uh, we invited for each one of those uh, a few uh, respondents. Uh, where we shared uh, with them the questions that we were going to post every 15 minutes and we shared also some material from the zine so they had a way to prepare and think through um, their answers because the discussion then actually became quite a dynamic uh, form of exchange. Um, so this happened on uh, three different uh, moments and uh, we did it also we tied these conversations to hashtags um, and uh, we were actually really surprised how well attended they were. Uh, so besides the people we invited, also a lot of um, people joined who've heard about it uh, one way or another. Uh, so they were actually really fast paced discussions where you joined one thread and couldn't really follow <laughs> the other one. Uh, it was moderated by me, Inte and Christina and we, each kind of seemed to have a different experience also of the discussion and followed a different thread where actually we felt, okay, how do we bring it together? And so many beautiful conversations uh, um, took place there, so many valuable resources were shared. And we afterwards had this kind of almost a moment of despair where we thought like, okay, and what now? What do we do with it? We cannot just leave it on Twitter. We have to do something uh, with it and this is where the idea of uh, bringing it together in into a form of syllabus also uh, inspired by the work of pirate care at that time um, we felt we could kind of pull the thread of all of these conversations and try to bring it in one space that was 
comprehensible, um, but that also would have this conversational and resource sharing character. Uh, so the way we uh, decided to, uh, to do it was to um, kind of invest our energy into creating some sort of an editorial process where we could make sense of what happened and what actually conversational threads uh, were there, uh, but also to think of how we could trace back all of it to not take away the ownership and the logic of the difference and the dynamics of the conversations that took place. So the um, the way we uh, we decided to do it is to introduce this uh, two um, two types of links. Uh, it's perhaps not very well visible in the slide, but if you look carefully, you see that some of the color highlights are more bright red and the other one are more orangey. Uh, so the, um, the, the, the orange ones were uh, the kind of quotes and the links that, um, that allowed you to come back to the conversation of, to, on Twitter if you wanted to follow a specific exchange between uh, participants and the red ones point to resources that were shared abundantly. So we saw the syllabus both as a repository of resources as well as the uh, documentation of the discussion and the sense-making uh, layer of what uh, happened in these uh, discussions. So in a way, we um, uh, kind of saw these moments as, uh, as a way to bring a global community in a form of, of exchange and building this uh, repository of situated knowledges uh, and examples from around the world in this, uh, in this moment. And I think what was important for us in, in making the syllabus, uh, and also like a form of learning from the zine, because making the zine took us about three months. It was, we dealt with 30 contributions, so it was quite a labor intensive uh, process and we were also thinking through how to make that knowledge shareable in a format that is more accessible, faster and cheap. Um, so um, we uh, decided to make it only digital also because it dealt with this idea of interactivity and exchange with what actually happened so you could click on a link and that would bring you back to the resource or to the conversation. Uh, the editing process still took us, I think, about two weeks of really intense uh, work of really thinking through these uh, ideas. And yeah, I mean, we had already the design that was made for the zine, so we could just like flow it into that template. And in that sense, it really allowed us to, um, uh, to make it uh, cheap and distributable uh, worldwide. Um, and um, uh, what we, I think I already mentioned that, but, but let me kind of uh, rephrase it, that, that it was really um, uh, important that the syllabus did not feel like, like a work that the two of us did, that it was a collective work where um, uh, a number of uh, contributions uh, shared with a sense of collectivity um, uh, were brought together with this kind of feeling of reciprocity uh, in mind. Um, so while we organized the content, uh, we still wanted it to reflect that, uh, that collective and diverse uh, and conversational character so that it, like in, while we were editing, we really took care to not kill that, um, uh, that sense of, uh, um, of, 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 yeah, of, of collective work. Um, and what was also, um, our aim was to let this discussion continue. So what we did in the syllabus, each of the new thoughts, like lines <laughs> of thought that we uh, delineated, uh, got its own hashtag 
so it could also still become alive and uh, be continued. And to a certain extent that happened, uh, mostly by people who found out about it a little bit later and they felt really connected. So they really had the urge to continue that conversation. But we were also aware that without more energy and, and kind of stimulation of that discussion, these processes are very, very vulnerable and it's very, it's very difficult to have them continue on them own. Um, so, um, yeah, after the, um, the syllabus came out, we felt that this kind of space for knowing together and, and, and sharing experiences uh, was, was quite valuable, but at the same time, we felt the urge to explore what could be done with it further. We were thinking about, you know, a lot of people were also asking us, is there a follow up? Is there going to be a next issue, next edition? How we very much felt like the zine and the syllabus were very much a product of, of the moment. So it was not our idea to make yet another publication, but this, um, uh, the, the need to continue it one way or another was there, only in a, we did not really know yet how to do it um, until, um, uh, let's say, we realized that there was something uh, in it that, um, that, that kind of did not allow it to escape so much from the intellectual theoretical discourse and where we felt that even though a lot of people felt inspired uh, by it, it was still difficult for them to imagine a different reality where they could be themselves and that the, the crisis of imagination is really uh, something that's real. And that um, really, um, I think, inspired us to think what could we do to, to break it. And uh, we started uh, thinking how could we come up with ways to, uh, to challenge it and how to take the first steps in, let's say, uh, in like dismantling this perpetual normalcy of the world around us and like how to allow spaces for thinking differently as a way forward to think uh, to build these different worlds. So the point where we are at is that we designed a workshop format um, where we invite participants to work with the idea of feminist imaginaries based on specific shared values that the group agrees on. Uh, and then um, they decide what values they want to create imaginaries around. We tested it so far in, in two workshops. Uh, one that you see in this picture was uh, um, done as a part of a maker exchange with uh, two different theater groups uh, where we each shared our work with a, with a group of participants and uh, invited them to, to, to think along and to participate in that process. And um, uh, I think what's important for us in, in developing these ways is to, uh, to see how we could build a shared and more embodied um, than theoretical ways of uh, imagining what feminist economies uh, could be and what futures would they allow us uh, to build. Uh, the second workshop uh, we did in a smaller, more intimate setting with the Care Ecologies group that I mentioned yesterday that we're bo bo both part of, um, where um, we also, um, like a part of the workshop is that we allow the people to also like use some of the doodles we prepared and try to use these doodles as building blocks for what they uh, as if visualizations of the, what they imagine. So here you can see, I think it was quite an interesting outcome of the, the forest of care rituals that one of the, one of the groups uh, created. And yeah, our dream at this point is to kind of find ways to expand the necessary space outside of this capitalist logic and to kind of challenge it and um, see how we could, um, yeah, create ways that like support us in responding to climate and social urgencies. I think like many of you spoke about like searching for this more embodied way, um, and yeah, it's 
um, just um, I think important for us to like see how we could yeah poke through this idea of the crisis of imagination and yeah we're very glad that we could share it with you